Well, first of all, I, I do want to pay tribute to the Prime Minister and her team and the way in which she has engaged with us throughout this process. However, significant gaps do remain. Um, we have made progress in relation to domestic legislation, but, and it is a big but, uh, it doesn't deal with the treaty level changes that were required in relation to the withdrawal agreement. And what do I mean around that? The backstop, as you know, back in January, uh, when we had the Brady Amendment was to be dealt with and the Prime Minister went to Europe and uh, we hope asked for changes to the withdrawal agreement. Uh, then we talked about treaty level changes to deal with the backstop uh, and now we're talking about domestic legislation. But there is a, a difference between having an international treaty with a backstop that will become operative and domestic legislation because the treaty will always come first. And that's our fundamental problem, because what it means, in effect, is that the internal market of the United Kingdom has barriers in it between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. So constitutionally and economically, this will have an impact on Northern Ireland. Given that many people believe that it's a choice between this deal or no Brexit, if the DUP has to make that choice, what do you choose? Well, I don't believe that is the choice. I believe that uh, at, the, at the moment in the House of Commons there's a lot of conversations going on around a range of deals. I think it has been made clear uh, by Parliament that they are not in favour of a, a no-deal scenario. But what we can't agree to is something that threatens the Union, which has a strategic risk to the Union, because for us, in the Democratic Unionist Party, the Union will always come first. Uh, and that has been the issue right from the beginning of all of this. You will remember back in December of 2017, we warned about the dangers of the backstop. The Prime Minister made a call and went ahead in relation to that uh, declaration. Then, of course, came last November uh, the uh, withdrawal agreement. We warned her before she signed that withdrawal agreement. We wrote to her, you will recall, in relation to all of these matters. But she decided to go ahead. We cannot sign up to something that would damage the union. How much pressure is the DUP under to back the withdrawal agreement and, from many people's perspective, rescue Brexit? Well, I don't think it's a case of rescuing Brexit because uh, we very much want to see Brexit happening. We believe in Brexit. We believe in the opportunities that are there post-Brexit. We wish we were able to spend more time talking about the global opportunities that we believe are there for the nation post-Brexit. But instead, we have become really bogged down uh, in a process, if you like. Uh, but that process has a withdrawal agreement with a backstop that will cause damage to the United Kingdom. And for us, that is the critical point. And if you believe that backstop poses a threat to the integrity of the United Kingdom and the Prime Minister is telling us the withdrawal agreement is locked, closed, what were you even negotiating about, really? Well, of course, we wanted to try and get a deal. And when this all began, as you remember, uh, with the Brady Amendment, we were looking to deal with the backstop. We wanted the withdrawal agreement reopened to deal with that backstop. Uh, then there was a conversation around treaty level changes to try and deal with the issues as well. Uh, but we feel very fundamentally that the backstop in that withdrawal agreement makes it impossible for us to sign up to the withdrawal agreement. And you know what? I regret that because we wanted to get a deal, a deal that worked for the whole of the United Kingdom, a deal that worked for Northern Ireland. But now we're in a situation where we cannot sign up to the withdrawal agreement and it's all because the Prime Minister decided to go for that backstop way back in December of 2017. One final question. Lots of Brexiteers, Tory Brexiteers in particular, appear to be dropping like nine pins this evening after the Prime Minister's announcement to the 1922 committee. Do you feel abandoned by them? No, I don't feel abandoned at all. I mean, in politics, you have to decide what is the most important issue. Uh, what motivates you? What makes you do the job that we do? And for many of those people, Brexit is incredibly important. Brexit's incredibly important for me as well, but it's not the most important issue. The most important issue for me, for the Democratic Unionist Party, for our 10 MPs, is the preservation of the union.